I hope everyone's doing well. Welcome to Management Theories. Sorry I've been away. I've had a new job, so I've been really busy with that. But I just want to catch up with uh, doing a video on code switching today. Um, and we'll start this uh, Management Theory on the topic of uh, people judge you within eight feet, eight seconds, and the first eight words that come out of your mouth. And I love this quote by Caitlin Duggins, who describes what we always do um, from this TED, recent TED Talks that she did. Um, the reality is we judge people really quickly. And to address this, uh, the people that are getting judged learn a lot of new skills. And these skills include code switching to survive. It's what happens when we reflexively adjust our linguistics, clothing, mannerisms, behaviors, demeanors, and colloquialisms to fit within the culture. For example, you all in Southern America turns into you all and adjust to these colloquialisms according to the environment that you're in. In Canada, I grew up in the prairies actually, and which is the equivalent of the Midwest for the US. And we would always say things like giver, which meant to go above and beyond what you're expected. Um, but you rarely hear that word ever being used outside of um, the prairies. We also see the you know, really famous examples of Obama, for example, who's very good at code switching and he would be doing a meet and greet and walking through a crowd and giving fist bumps to people who are black and then hand, firm handshakes to people that were white and could quickly adjust to the social situations and adjust his code and be really effective at code switching. And we've heard this quote, uh, when in Rome, do what the Romans do. But the irony is that we only expect code switching from those that are marginalized, BIPOC and minority communities, and not from the people that are in power. And the, the reality that's been shared with me is that in the LGBTQIA2S plus category, they have developed a completely different work persona to survive in the workplace culture. And so much so that they're Workplace culture doesn't even belong to them and they don't identify with this and in some cases, some extreme cases, some are even contemplating suicide rather than living because this identity doesn't even match themselves and it's a real problem. And something that we need to learn to be better, especially in the workplace. A hidden reality is that code switching expectations remain for the BIPOC community, for example, to adjust to fit in and expend much more energy than the rest of us to achieve the same messages, connections, and outcomes. And if you haven't learned to code switch, the consequences are quite dangerous in the workplace and in personal life because, for example, there are many people of uh, cases of people um, to dying over the fact that they aren't able to code switch properly. For example, law enforcement mistakenly sensing someone is escalating because they aren't able to code switch to the same language that they're using. And for those that are actually committed to being authentic, original, unapologetic to their natural code experiences, there are real consequences passed up for promotions because you don't necessarily fit in, jeered at for being told by HR that your natural hair is inappropriate, or that kissing on the cheek is inappropriate if you're French, for example. And these are examples. And so let's talk about where do we go from here? Um, in the workplace, allowing people to live their truths to appreciate diversity is so important today. Exposing yourself to different code books and different subcultures so that you're more aware and empathetic to others. Uh, creating more psychological safety for team members to be themselves. Learning to adjust your own code books to match minorities, BIPOCs, and marginalized communities in more authentic, respectful, and considerate ways to make people feel just a little bit more comfortable in the workplace. And learning to become more self-deprecating. Removing labels such as using Oreo, banana, or lemon. Uh, banana is an example that we use here in Canada sometimes amongst the Asian community to describe someone who's yellow on the outside but white on the inside. For example, very uh, westernized Asians. But, and we gotta remove those labels. It's a thing. The pressure is pretty immense. When we force marginalized individuals to have to adapt to others that are in positions of power, but do nothing in return. It's really time that we're seeing in the business community to learn the hidden reality and see what we can do to ensure there's more code switching awareness in the workplace and creating a safer space for people to be open about their identity. Telling them that you're on a journey and trying to be better. Tell them in an authentic voice that you aren't perfect and you're doing your best. 
and asking for advice and pointing out mistakes so that you can learn. I've been lucky enough to have really good friends and really good coworkers that actually still take the time today, even just recently giving me advice on when I made a mistake and how we can improve ourselves. You know, I just recently left a job and it was really interesting to hear the story where, you know, I actually was making a joke with my male manager um, where we were sitting in the back seat of a car and we were so squished in because there's three of us, I made a joke that I couldn't see where his hands and people laughed, but I realized that in hindsight, that was a wrong joke because if that had been a woman manager, I would have never made that joke. And a coworker who was gay and le or ge gay or lesbian might take a lot of offense to that. And I think it's really important to realize that sometimes jokes uh, can be taken the wrong way. And also it's not, it can be also be very insensitive if you're not thinking about code switching clearly and understanding how do you adapt to different personalities within the workplace as well, right? So it, I still have a lot to learn on all that. And some things that our students and managers share in the class when we have these conversations in classes, it seems as students argue that we need to meet in the middle somehow. I really appreciate the differences and, and all of us can do better to improve our ability to code switch together. And to finish, we can all use a little bit more empathy, a little bit more moral imagination, a little bit more appreciation and understanding of that extra work that some of our coworkers need to do in the workplace just to fit in, and also lose some of the personal identity. Right? Currently, there's an expectation that we code switch up to people with power. But what if we, the ones in power, code switch down a bit? make our employees feel a little bit more comfortable in the workplace, make them feel at home, and do our best to meet them in the middle. And let's try to imagine what kind of workplace this could be when we do that, when we try to meet everyone together and appreciate the differences in the workplace. So I hope you enjoyed this concept of code switching. And uh, I've also included some videos which uh, on this YouTube link, which are some Pearl and Pixar, which shows an example of Pearl, who's a character who tries to code switch and adjust to the workplace to fit in. Uh, Key and Peel did this really great comedy sketch of Obama doing a meet and greet um, and playing up the example that he does in real life. And I also attached some videos on how to manage code switching how to understand it, how to build it better in your workplace and adjust to that as well and encourage coworkers to do that the same. So anyways, hope you found this fascinating on the concept of code switching. Um, I found it fascinating personally myself and going on this learning journey and hope you'll find this fascinating too. So thanks very much for listening and put a like and subscribe and it helps the algorithm out and improves the, the channel. So thanks very much for watching. Talk to you guys soon. Bye.